Hi, this is Nick Pips, and I teach you how to give your dollars a job. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe, and if you could, tap the like button. That helps YouTube share this information with other individuals with similar interests. Okay, so today we're going to go through how to download and set up MetaTrader 5 for trading on Android. First things first, you want to go and download the app by going to your Play Store. You will see it right here. Click on your Play Store. Then at the top, click on the hourglass to search and type in MT5. All right. Hit the little enter slash hourglass button and that should bring up MetaTrader 5 as you can see right here. All right. I already have it downloaded. So it says open. But for you, you should have to click there to download it once it downloads and install. It'll change to open button. So once we get there, click open and that should open up your MT5. You should be presented with the quote screen. Now, I have dark mode on my phone, so that's why my screen is kind of dark colored theme. Yours may be a white light color theme, depending on your phone settings. Not a big deal if you want the dark settings. Just go to your phone and change your settings to dark mode. Uh, but uh, this is your quote screen. This is going to be the first screen. Now that we have MetaTrader 5 downloaded. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to connect to your broker right because metatrader 5 is just a communication vehicle for you to communicate with your broker to say when you want to enter and exit uh trade setups right so um you want to go up to the menu button which is going to be these three uh little lines to the left and as you can see on the top left mine says uh carbon capital now um your broker that you choose is up to you uh, but what you want to do is you want to go to um manage accounts all right when you first download mt5 it'll probably say meta quotes up here which is the default uh, i guess uh, like a paper uh, trading uh, account that opens up with metatrader 5 just so that you can you know a paper trade but you want to connect it to your personal broker go to manage accounts and so from here you'll see that i already have a couple of accounts uh attached to this but if you want to uh, you can actually open up a brokerage account from here all right, and also a demo account to either demo or live by hitting the plus button here. And uh, what you want to do is you want to search for your broker. So let's say that your broker, uh, one of the brokers that I personally use is Osprey FX. As you can see, Osprey is right there. I click on Osprey. And as you can see, it says open a demo account at the top. But if I have already went on my desktop PC or on my phone and already went to the broker's website and registered for an account with this particular broker, I can log into an existing account, as you guys can see, right? So if I was logging into an existing account, I would just type in the login information that was emailed to me by the broker. It will have your login uh, number. It's generally a number. And then it'll have a password. All right, so enter your information. Once you enter your information, hit log on. Make sure that you have this button here checked, the save password, because if not, you're going to um, have to enter your password every time you want to log into this account. Go ahead and hit that save button just for the added convenience. Then also make sure you select the right server. OK, depending on what kind of account you're setting up, your broker may have multiple servers. I've seen some brokers that will have seven or eight different uh, servers. Right. But the email that they send you with the login credentials will have the specific server that your account will be attached to. So make sure that you select the right server. And once you do that, you click login. So once you log in, let me go back to my account. So once you log in, you should see your account pop up right here. If the information that you enter is correct, you should see your balance for that account show up where this demo alive. And then you will see right here at the top, you have this green banner that says demo. If it's a demo account, if it's a live account like these two down here, you won't see a demo banner. It'll just be blank. Right. So um, if for some reason it says that the, there was invalid credentials or the information didn't uh, connect your account, just go back, double check, make sure that you put in the right information. So just repeat the process if you get any kind of errors. Cool. Next thing we're going to do is going to go over to your um, your quotes window. If you look down here at the bottom. You'll see these double arrows. That's going to be your quotes window. OK, you can also get to your quotes window by hitting the little menu button again at the top. And as you can see, 
those same options are right here as well too okay so let's go over to the quotes menu so the quotes menu is important because this is where you will find the assets that you can trade with your broker okay if your broker does not support that asset it will not be inside of this screen right so when you first start it's going to have some some default um, options here uh, so what you can do is you want to go over to the um, plus icon well let's talk about the pencil first the pencil is how you edit this list this right here this quotes list is kind of like a watch list so to say so if i hit this pencil you can see that i'll get a couple of options when it comes to these uh symbols so as you can see all of the symbols have this little three lines aka like a menu looking option to the left of them and if i want to interact with these i can just click and hold that and i can drag these and sort them in a way that I uh, see fit. Now, if I want to get rid of anything on here, I will just hit the trash can button right here. And as you can see, it gives me this options to check the individual ones that I want to um, remove. As you guys can see, Bitcoin doesn't have an option to remove. All right, that happens sometimes. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and delete all of these by hitting these double check marks right here to the left. That checks everything that I can uh, select. And then I'm gonna hit the trash can and that will uh, remove those items. Okay, all right. So as far as Bitcoin, it's staying there, but I'm cool with that. So next up, how do I add symbols that I wanna have in this watch list or whatever, right? So what you wanna do is you wanna hit the plus button. Once you hit the plus button, you'll have the options that your particular broker has available. As you can see, um, there's a couple of things, U, U, UE shares, that's the Euro shares, you got USD shares, that's probably going to be stocks. Yep, as you can see, these are stocks. But what you're looking for is you're looking for Forex, right? There's two ways you can find the symbol that you're looking for, aka which uh, Forex pair you're looking to trade. You can go and click on which category it will be under. So major will be all of the USD pairs and the minors will be the cross pairs like Audi Swiss, Audi JPY, uh, GBP JPY, uh, GBP CAD, all those, right? That's one way. Go and find them in the individual folder. And as you can see, my broker that I'm attached to supports cryptos, indices, okay, metals, and futures, right? And energies, right? So natural gas and U.S. oil and all that, right? Your broker, if it's not listed here, your broker does not support it. Second way to find a symbol is just to come up here where it says find symbol and type in USD Swiss. So I'm, if I'm looking for USD Swiss, I type it in like that. And then I just select it on the screen if I want to add it to my uh, list. So if I hit that particular symbol, you see it goes away. It goes away because it's no longer inside of these available ones. It's now over here. If I hit the back arrow there, it's now in my watch list slash my quotes list. Okay. Um, and have you, as you can see, my quote screen has the spread on here. It has a time on there and it has a low and a high. Okay. This is because I have the advanced on, the advanced settings on. Um, if yours look a little different where it just has the name of the symbol and, and these two prices, that's completely normal. But if you want to have the extra information like the spread and the high and the low, uh, we're going to show you how to do that when we go back to the settings. All right, but that's how you add a pair. And so um, if you go and find it inside the folder, just click on it. What I suggest that you do, let me go ahead and do this. And it's up to you how you want to do this. This is your screen. So you you do it as you see fit. Um, but I generally do this when I first connect the broker to my uh, MT5. I go to the plus, I go to the major. Then I just start clicking to add all the majors. As I click them, you see they go up. And that's all my majors there listed first. Then I go to my minors and then I just click to add all the minors in alphabetical order by those because they're already in alphabetical order in here. So as I add them to my chart, they're going to be added in alphabetical order. All right. So now I have all my majors and my minors. And then if I trade metals, all right, which from time to time I dabble in gold versus U.S. dollar. You can see it's right there. Clicked on it. It was added. And if you uh, trade those indices, you know, go in there, find your indice that you that you trade. All right. US 30 is one that a lot of people trade. And bam. Now I have everything sorted by my majors first. And then after that, my minors in alphabetical order. And then at the bottom, 
my gold and my US 30. Then, of course, if I trade any cryptos, add those. But do that however you want. But that's how you add things to your quote screen. OK, next up, let's go back over to the settings and let's look at how um, we add in the spread uh, counter over here to the left. OK, so go back to your menu, which is a three line to the top left and come down here to where it says settings. See at the bottom Hit settings. As you can see right here at the very top where it says quotes, we have an advanced mode. So in the advanced mode, as you see, it says that the quotes window will show the spreads, time data and so forth. Right. Just check that box if it's not checked. If you want to see all that, if you don't want to see all that, uncheck it. Real simple. Now, another one that I like to change is that you guys, let me show you. If I go over here to my uh, trading window, which is the little candles at the bottom. And if I go and get into a trade, so let's go ahead and let's short Bitcoin. You guys heard that door closing sound. Now, if you're at work or something and you're trying to get in the trade, <laughs> you don't want everybody in their mama knowing that you just entered a trade. Go back over to the settings. And uncheck this box where it says order sounds. Then it will no longer make that sound when you go to enter trade. So if I go back in again and go to add in order. This time you didn't hear that door closing sound. So let's go ahead and finish looking at the settings. OK, so MetaQuotes ID this is a little bit more advanced, guys, but the MetaQuotes ID can be used for you to have your desktop or, uh, or laptop. MT5 communicate with your phone. So if you trade on your desktop computer, you can actually have it set up to where if trades are, are either triggered, like if you have pending orders or things like that, or trades are open to close, you, know, you can go ahead and have the option turned on to where it'll send a message to your mobile phone, MT5, via this MetaQuotes ID, a notification that, hey, your trade closed or your order was activated or your stop loss was triggered or whatever, right? It's a little bit more advanced, but that is an option, okay? Also, one-click trading. That's another thing that, that people will like. So if you look at it, it says it allows you to perform trade operations with a single tap. So if I go in here and I cut on one-click tr trading, it gives me this long disclaimer. It's just pretty much telling you that if you accidentally click a trade and it gets you in, they're not going to have any sympathy for you. Because you're you're saying that I want one click trading. You're telling the broker, if I click this buy button, I want you to buy. If I click this sell button, I want you to sell immediately. I don't want you to confirm it. I just want you to put me into the trade. That's what you're saying by accepting these terms. So I'm accept the terms. Hit OK. So next up, after the medical side D, guys, you got your ringtone. If you want to change the, the ringtone of uh, the notifications. All right. So um, you can go ahead and uh, change that. Also, language, if you want to change the language, maybe you speak a different language or you set up somebody that speaks Spanish or French or some other language as their primary language, you can come in here and change that. I normally uncheck the news updates. I don't use that. All right, but that's the setting screen. So let's go back to our uh, quotes screen. So from here, I want to go ahead and, and move over to the charts. So let's go over to the charts. So as you guys can see, um, on the chart it's black and white, very plain. Um, if you want to customize that, just click on a, a, a blank area on the chart and you'll get this little scroll wheel. And this scroll wheel is pretty cool. Let me go over it real quick. As you can see, it has a couple of options. M1, M5, M15, M30. Those are just some little quick shortcuts to get to the different time charts, right? So on the 30 minute, each count is a 30 minutes uh, worth of data on the one hour and so forth, right? So that's a pretty neat tool to be able to switch to those really quickly, okay? Next up, um, we want to customize our uh, colors, right? Because I don't really like this color as far as the black and white. It just looks really dull and dead. So let's go ahead and click on the background somewhere to get our, our customization wheel. Come over to the little gear. And as you can see in, in here, you got a couple of options to change how things look. At the top, you can change your candlestick type. If you want to have a bar chart for some reason, or if you want a line chart, you can change it here, right? I'm going to leave mine on candlestick, but that's where the option is to change that if you want to change it. Next is going to be the open, high, low, close. That's what OH 
LC stands for. If you want to see all of that data on your chart, go ahead and check that on. I don't personally use it, but hey, uh, if your trading style requires that, that's how you get that data on the screen. Uh, so let me show y'all what that looks like. So if I go back, now you can see at the very top up here, up under Bitcoin, it has these numbers and stuff. That's the open, close, high, low numbers, right? So let's go back on the background, go back to the settings. I'm going to check that because I don't want the open and high, low and close stuff, right? I'm good. Next up, show trade levels. That's just going to be like if you want to see your TPs and stop losses on the screen. If I go back real quick, you can see that on my buy for, matter of fact, let me go ahead and just put in a stop loss of TP real quick. Okay, because I don't have one right now. Let's put in a stop loss. This is a buy order. So we're going to put our stop loss, loss lower. Modify. Okay, and go back to my chart. Now you can see I have this stop loss right here on the screen, right up in here. So if I click on my background again, go back to the settings. If I uncheck that show trades levels and go back, now you can see it doesn't show anything about my trade. So if you are doing a screenshot of the structure or something to send to somebody and you don't want them to know how much <laughs> you got in for a trade as far as your lot size and all that good stuff, that's how you would hide that data if you uh, if you uh, chose to. Okay? The trade levels. Independent charts. All right. So that's going to be left to default. Okay? Show period separators. Show period separators. That's going to be if you want to, uh, like it says, to uh, the option to draw vertical lines in the chart that correspond with the larger period time frame border. So, you know, that's when the uh, the new day starts and everything, right? The period separator. So if you want to see that, check it. I don't. As price line, I leave that on because I want to uh, have that. So if you don't know what that is, uh, when you're trading, as you guys can see, there is a blue price and a red price. That's your ass versus your bid price. If I go back to my settings and I uncheck that ask line, you'll see now I only have one, which is the blue line. Okay? So go ahead and leave both of those on. What that's good for is that it's a visual representation. Oops. Go ahead and leave that on the ask price line. Or turn it on if it's not, because what that's good for is this. Let me go down to a lower time frame so it's more prevalent. So you see right here, these two lines, this is your spread in visual form. So if you're not familiar with this, what that means is that um, whatever the, this gap is right here, or this big old difference between the red and the blue line, that's the spread that you're paying the broker. So that's why anytime you enter into a trade, you immediately in drawdown, right? It's because you have to cover that spread. That spread is how your brokers make money. You can't do much about it. The only thing you can really do about it is to find you a broker that has low spreads. All right. But they all have some kind of form of spread or commissions because at the end of the day, they're a third party. Right. That's in this trading um, relationship between uh, us and the market. Right. Because we need brokers. Right. They're the middleman that fills the orders between the two parties. Right. So they're going to get their cut no matter what. So that's how uh, the ask in the uh, bid line works, right? So make sure you have that ask uh, price line on there. It's just a good good thing to get used to because if you're watching, as far as like if you're scalping, you can see how those spreads are constantly changing. And then also it'll help you out so that way you can know where your trade order is going to get filled in, right? So that's the uh, ask line, right? Go back. Customize colors. That's the next thing that we want to do, right? So uh, when you first get started, not quite sure what your default is going to be, but let's go over this. As you can see at the top, you have a couple of color schemes. You go over green on black. If I hit done on that, you'll see that now we have green uh, outline candles with the white fill for the uh, bear candles and the clear filling for the bull candles. Right, and it still has that black background. Let's go back to my settings, go back to my color. Now, if we go to custom, this is what I like to do. And now we can get to start uh, doing some things, right? So like for instance, where grid is, grid is gonna be those black lines in the background. See those little dotted lines and the squares in the background? That's the grid. If you wanna get rid of that, go to settings, 
colors where it say again go down to custom now where it says grid click on the grid color and just make it match your background so if your background is black make the grid black all right so now if i go back you see now the grid is gone because it matches the background okay next um you want to look at your bar up candle that's going to be your bull candle what color you want your bull candles to be it's probably going to be green or blue i personally like blue but uh let's leave it at green all right bar down is going to be your bear candle right so we want that one to be red if you want to use some other custom color this is where you would select that bull candle again i'm gonna make it green and my bear candle make it red chart line okay you can change that if you want to but let me show you what that is all right so right now you don't see anything on that so you're good all right next up but you see how my chart is starting to come together as far as my colors that i like volumes we not worry about that because we don't have that checked your bid price line if you want to change the color of your bid price line you can i'm gonna make that purple you want to make or, or like i say if you want to change it to match the color of where the order would be or whatever right you could do that but just know that you can customize that okay if you want to change the colors for those and then uh we don't use the last price line but you can customize that as well and stop levels will be of course that's your stop loss right if i hit done as you can see now my candles are red and green my background is it's blank aka is black all black right and um that's how you would customize those and you can change these to your heart's content to whatever color you want so the bull candles i'm going to leave that green and my bear candles i'm going to make that red and i'm going to leave the, the outline uh white that's fine but you could do it however you want okay so that's it for the settings as far as the color customization all right so let's get into these numbers uh, these uh, options at the top let's get into these options at the top so as you guys can see we have the crosshair i kind of showed that earlier but the crosshair just puts a a crosshair on the screen that you can click and drag around like if i wanted to know what this price level was right here i can draw my put my crossbar crosshair across the top of that and you can see i have a price right here so if i want to make that my stop loss on my order i would know that my stop loss would need to be at 48951 that's what i use that for that's the crosshair and again it also can help you with the date and the time of the candles now at the very bottom you see that it has the date and the time but the time is going to be on a different time than your current time zone. So I think it's a, a GMT or whatever your broker's time format is. Uh, so that could be confusing because like right now it is 1217 on Saturday. But it says 2015 at the bottom. Okay. So just be mindful of that. But I don't really use it for the date and time. I normally use the crosshair just to know, okay, at this level, this is where my stop. If I want to put my stop loss at this level. That's what it needs to be. And if I want to put my TP at this level, this is what the, the TP needs to be. Next up is going to be this F or the function key. So if we go there, as you can see, it gives us a lot of indicators, right? This is our indicator screen. So if you want to add a moving average, a stochastic, a um, MACD, there's a bunch of different options as you guys can see. Uh, fractals and so forth. This is how you add indicators. So some of the popular ones is going to be a moving average. So if I want to add a moving average, you can set the parameters here. Once you're done, hit done, and it'll add it to your chart. So you can see now I have this red line, which is a moving average going across my chart. Now, if I go back to that function screen, you'll see now that I have a list that says main chart and it has moving average. So that's the if I want to change the parameters, just go back to there, change the parameters. I want to make that a 50. Let's use that as an example. Now it moves that line because it's a 50 moving average now instead of a 10, right? Whatever that period is set at, that's what your moving average is going to be set at. So let's go back to the to that indicator window. And now if I want to add another indicator, because sometimes we may use multiple indicators for our trading style, I can hit this F plus button on the right. And as you can see, it gives me more options. So let's go ahead and add the MACD. We're going to leave it at the, at the default settings and we're going to hit done. And now you can see I have my MACD at the bottom, right? But it put it all on a separate uh, window. It didn't put it over the top of my, my candlestick. So for certain indicators, that's what it's going to do. So let's go back to our functions. And if I want to change my settings for MACD, I will just click on it in that list. Change my settings to whatever I need to change it to. 
then it would update it. Now, this is where it gets interesting. If I want to add a, another indicator on top of my MACD, I would hit this little plus button right here to add another indicator on top of it, right? So if I select a, hmm, let's go with another moving average. Maybe I want to put a moving average on top of my MACD. Let's make that a 200. Make it pink. Hit done. Now you can see down here in my MACD, I have another moving average that's added on top of the MACD, right? They, it combined it on top of that one. It stacked it. So that's the options you have. Again, I don't trade with indicators on MT5, but I, I use MT5 primarily just to enter and exit trades and manage trades. But if you're a person that trades from your phone primarily, which is fine, this is how you go and add in the indicators. And if you want to, you can add another indicator into the main menu a main chart by clicking the F plus next to the main chart. And let's say I want to add a stochastic just below the MACD on my screen. Now, if I hit done, now you see I have them both down here stacked at the bottom with their own separate windows. So that's how you would add multiple uh, indicators on your screen, right? And if you want to um, delete them, you can long press that particular indicator. If you see right here, I got an X to the right if i uh, click on here and hold it lets me delete it right there or you could have went back to the function screen and deleted it from here by clicking on the trash can at the top and then clicking the little box next to that indicator you want to delete and then hitting the trash can again and then that would delete the indicator as well too so those are some options for deleting the indicators right so that's indicators next up let's talk about this little money symbol right the money symbols are just a shortcut for your quotes so instead of coming down here to the left, clicking on the quotes to go to my quotes, this is kind of like a quick shortcut. So if I click on that, you'll see here go all those symbols that I added on my quote screen. So if I want to just jump over to RDNZD, bam, I'm already over on RDNZD. If I'm going to jump from there to EURUSD, bam, I'm on EURUSD, right? Real convenient shortcut right there. I don't have to come click on quotes, come and find it, click on it, hit open chart. And then it goes to the chart. You see how long that took? I just come up here, bam, boom, chart is open. Real convenient there. Next, we're going to go to this little double uh, rectangle button here. Check this out. So MT5, you had the option to add multiple chart windows. So right now, you see I have Euro USD. If I hit the new window, as you can see, it's going to load up a second window on top of or at the bottom of the one that I already have up. So bam. So now you can see I have two different windows, but as you can see, this one started off with the default setting. So if you want to change and modify this one to different colors, just come down here, do the same thing, change the colors. And once we do that and hit done, you'll see that now those colors are changed. All right. So this is pretty cool because you can actually have your Euro. Let's, let's matter of fact, let's do that. You can come here, click on this, select, select the bottom window, make that Euro USD, and you can make this one the Let's say you're going to make this one the 15-minute chart, and you're going to come back here, click at the top, and make this the hour chart. And now I can have my hour window here with my 15-minute at the bottom, right? Then I can be watching both to see the higher time frame movement versus the lower time frame movement, right? Or you can use it to look at multiple pairs at the same time. You know, maybe you're trading correlated pairs, um, whatever the case may be. You can use that to your advantage, but I thought that was pretty cool. On MT5, you don't have that on MT4. So, um, but coming back here, you see you can change how they tile it. So right now we're tile horizontal. You can have it tile vertical. Maybe you have a wider phone, like one of those fancy uh, Samsung flip phones or whatever. All right. So maybe you want to have it vertical. Right. That's cool. Go right on the head. There you go. But that's pretty cool. And now if you want to turn that off, just come up here and uh, click on the window you want to remove by checking the box and then hit remove. And now we're back to a single window. So that's what that's for. Pretty neat. Next up is going to be the trade window. So if you click on this little paper with the plus in the middle of it, that's how you open up a trade order, right? So if I hit that plus button, it brings up the trade window to where I can put in information for my trade. You have your, your uh, trade types at the top. Is it a market execution? Is it a buy limit? Is it a sell limit? Let me click on that. So here go your trading uh, options, right? As far as your order types. So buy limit, sell limit, buy stop, sell stop. Um, a couple of different options. And as you can see, we have some new options at the bottom called buy stop limits and sell stop limits. 
I personally never traded those, so I'm not going to touch on those. But buy limits, sell limits, and buy stops and sell stops, I have traded before. So uh, let's go through the different order types in a minute. Next up is going to have your lot size. So right here is where you want to put in the size of your order. The best way to know what to put in here is to make sure that you go and use the MyFX book position size calculator. And based off of your trade setup, so if I have a trade setup to where I'm entering a trade with a 30 pip stop loss for Euro USD, I'm going to go to my effects books position size calculator, put in my account size. So if I have a thousand dollar account and I have a uh, and I want to risk one percent on my trade and I have a 30 pip stop loss, I put all the information in and the, the calculator will give me the lot size to enter into my broker account. OK. So if you don't know what that is, just search Google my effects book position size calculator and it'll bring it up and just enter the data and it'll tell you the lot size to enter for your stop loss size. Right. If you have a 30 pip stop loss or if you have a 500 pip stop loss. But make sure you put in your lot size there and verify because if you put in the wrong lot size, it could be a whole lot uh, more money either loss <laughs> or made depending on your, your luck, <laughs> but make sure you verify that you put that in right. Cause sometimes if you're not paying attention, you could put in a 1.0 lot size and you, and you meant to put in a, a 0 0.10, right? So be careful. Next up, the red level to the left is going to be your stop loss level. As you can see, because it has a red line under and it actually labels it on MT5 that has SL or MT4 is just a line. It doesn't have SL or TP. And then of course on the right is the TP. If you hit the little plus button to the right of SL, it'll put your stop loss in at current market price, which is shown right down here. Plus one is a one pipette. So if I keep on clicking that, it keeps going up by pipettes, right? So that's a way for you to go ahead and get your, your stop loss entered. So for instance, um, I would just hit the little plus button, click right here, delete that. If I want to add it up, put it up 10 more pips. Current price is uh, 3154, so I will put in 3164, right, or whatever. As you can see at the bottom, those numbers are grayed out. I mean, the buy or the sell order is grayed out because I have some information in incorrectly. So right now, something is missing or something is inaccurate. Right now, you can see I don't have a lot size, so that's why. And now it's telling me if I want to enter that trade, I can sell it or buy it. All right, if I try to buy it. Bam, market closed. That's because it's the weekend and you can't trade Euro USD on the weekend. But that's how you would um, enter a buy or sell order in MT5. That's one of the ways, right? Clicking this little button right here, which is the paper with the plus. All right, now let's talk about the order types. Now, let's go ahead and go over to Bitcoin so that way we can actually enter the trade. As you guys can see, I have that. If I go over to my uh, account, information where it shows my brokerage account where it has my balance i have a plus button right here as well too with the paper that's the order right so whatever chart i'm on it knows it and if i hit that paper with the plus it automatically opens up the trade window for that asset and um that's how you would go in there and uh, that's another way to get into the uh, order window so let's talk about the pending orders so pending or and if you want to change the symbol while you're in here, guys, maybe you accidentally clicked uh, you in the chart for Euro USD and you want to trade a different one. Just come over here to this little dollar sign and there go your your list again. All right. And I can change the RDCAD. Now I can put in the order for RDCAD. Oh, I want to put in one for USDK. I can find it right here as well, too. Again, a little shortcut there. Order types. Buy limits, sell limits. OK, let's talk about it. Currently, Bitcoin price is at around 48,680, give or take. As you can see, it's fluctuating. I'm going to put in a buy. I want to put in a buy limit. So I'm saying if price drops down to $48,000, I want to get put in for a buy. So I'm going to select buy limit. And as you can see, now it has an option for a price right here. So I'm going to put in 48,000. All right. And I'm going to hit. Stop loss. I want my stop loss to be forty-seven thousand, because it goes. I wanted to come where in somewhere around forty-eight thousand, but I don't want to go under forty-seven thousand. I'm gonna put in my TP at fifty thousand. So I'm thinking it's gonna bounce off of forty-eight, 
thousand and bounce up to fifty thousand, right? And then once I have my parameters set, I hit place order. Now you see it says done by limit set. So right now you see that this order is not even open yet. It's just place because it's what's called a pending order. I come back over to my chart. If I, if I scroll out, you can see on my chart, I have a buy limit right here. Okay, current price is right here at this red and gray line right here. And this is my buy limit. So what a buy limit is saying that, hey, broker, if price comes back down to this support level or to this particular price point and crosses that, put me in for a buy. Right, but you're expecting price to bounce off of this level and then continue higher. That's why my TP is up here and my stop loss is down here. Now, price can continue to going down and, and hit my stop loss. That's that could happen. All right. But you're putting a buy limit in as a pending order saying that, hey, if price hits this particular floor again, I want to put me in for a buy because I think it's going to bounce off of that floor. Now, the opposite is true. If I come in here again to my order window. And I put in a sell limit. So now I'm saying, OK, well, if price comes back up and hits Let's just say 49,000. I believe that it's going to drop from there. So I'm going to put in a sell limit at 49,000, right? And if I'm getting in at 49,000 for a sell limit, if it goes higher, I want it to go ahead and take me out because maybe it's not going to drop. So I'm going to put in 51,000 for my stop loss. And at the TP, I'm going to say, well, after it hits 49,000, it hits that ceiling of 49,000, that maybe it's going to drop back down to 46,000. All right, then I'm gonna hit place order. Sell limit place, right? Again, still a pending order, has not been activated. It's just sitting in my queue. So as you can see, guys, I have a sell limit set right here. Current price is at this line. I'm wait, I'm saying that if price is this, this particular ceiling or this limit order, I want it to put me in for a sale. If price is this limit, I want it to sell from there. And my TP for that sale order is down here, right? Let me delete the buy limit so we're not confused. So going back, there you go. See the sell limit? So if I go over to the left, you can see. Let me zoom in. Let me go to a higher time frame, like the four hour. So as we can see, current price. Current price is right here. If it hits that level, I want to bounce off of that and come down, right? Hit that, hit that ceiling and come down, right? So that's a sell limit, right? That's the difference between a sell limit and a buy limit. When it comes to the buy stops and sell stops, all that means is that, okay, a buy stop just means that if price hits a certain price level, let's say a resistance level, and I don't think it's going to stop there, it's going to keep on going higher. So let's say I wanted to break through a resistance, and then I wanted to put me in for a buy, you would use a buy stop. If I'm thinking price is dropping and, and, I, and I say to myself, okay, if it breaks this floor, I want to get in for a sale. That's what you would use a sell stop for. So let me show you. Buy stop. We have 48658. So I'm gonna put me a buy stop at 49,000. And I'm gonna put in a stop loss for that one at 48,000. And place it. Now you see a buy stop has been set. So now check it out. If I go in and, and uh, zoom in. You can see that that buy stop is right here. So current price is at this gray and red line. My buy stop is at the blue line. So I'm saying if price comes up there and breaks that level, I want to get put in for a buy because I think it's going to continue to go higher. That's why my stop loss is at the bottom right there. So let's cl close that one out and let's do a sell stop example. Sell stop is the opposite. I'm thinking price is going to hit a floor, break through that floor and continue to drop. So in that case, I'm going to go ahead and put in, let's say, $47,000 for my sale stop. So I'm thinking if price hits $47,000, it's going to continue to drop lower than that because it has broken up prior floor. And I'm thinking the bottom is going to fall out. So my sale stop will be at $47,000. My stop loss will be, yeah, my stop loss will be higher. So that would be at, like, let's say $48,000. Hit place. Bam. Now, if I go back to my chart, now you will see. At current price is up here. I have a sell stop down here because I'm saying if price drops and breaks this floor, I think it's going to keep on dropping. So put me into a sale right there. That's what a sell stop order is used for. So that's pending orders. Pending order are great for individuals. You know, that trades market structure. Maybe you're saying, hey, the structure level gets broken. 
I'm going to uh, sell it. If uh, the structure level is going to hold up, I think it's going to hit that level and hold up, and then price is going to uh, bounce up from it. Then we you then you'll use a buy limit, right? So those are you know are pending orders, great, but setting it and forgetting it. Okay, so let's talk about how to manage a trade once you're in a trade. So let me go ahead and open up a position on Bitcoin. Let's just do a nice size like just so I can show you guys how to do a partial close. Okay. So once you're in the trade, you'll see that you have your uh, active trade position where it shows you your trade uh, lot size and your current profit and loss. If I click it, you'll see that it expands the window. And if I had any swap fees or commissions, those would be shown over here. If I had a stop loss or TP, it would be listed right here. Those price points for my stop loss and TP, but I don't have one. But let's do a partial. Let's talk about a partial close. Now you could do a partial close if you're in profit or if you're in drawdown like I am right now. So in order to do a partial close, you want to long hold. So click and hold long press the order. And as you can see at the bottom, I get a couple of options. I can close the position. I can modify the position. So I've modified if I want to add the stop loss of TP. I can create a whole new order for that same asset. Or I can go to the chart for that asset to get more information on what I want to do or what the chart is doing as far as the price movement, right? So we're going to click on close position. And as you can see, it brings up my close position window. So you can see that by the very top left, it says close position. And it shows the active price movements for the bid and ask price. And it shows me my running profit at the bottom. As you can see, I'm closed. I can close with $26 worth of profit right now if I choose to. Now, well, look at that. That quickly is out of profit. Now it's back in profit. But anyway, we're trading Bitcoin at a standard and we know it's very volatile. So if I want to do a partial close, so instead of closing out the entirety of my lot size that I have available in this order, which is a 1.0, I can click here, delete, and just close half of it. So half of a 1.0 lot size, which is a standard, would be a 0 0.5. 0 0.50 lot size as you can see at the bottom it says i'm gonna close with a profit of 332 whereas if i go back to a 1.0 you see it's up a lot higher at six dollars right which is you know again double that right so i'm gonna close a partial by going here and putting in the 0 0.50 now i'm gonna hit close profit all right so what's going to happen is it's going to close out 0.50 of that lot size and it's going to leave the other 0.50 remaining because if I go back over to my order history, you'll see that at the top right here, it shows that I closed half of a 1.0 lot size. So that's pretty cool. So it tells me what my original order was and how much of it I closed, what my profit and loss was. And again, if you have any swap or commission that you pay, it should show up right here. OK, this is the order ID number. If you need to email your broker because there was an issue with your order. That's the ID number that you give them to identify that particular order, right? So that's how you would do a partial close, okay, guys? And again, you could do it in any denomination that you want. If I go back to close position, if I want to close out 0 0.05, which is 50 cent a lot, right? I can do that as well, too. And it's going to leave the other 0.45 open, right? And going back to my orders over here. You see, it also uh, gives you the updated there too, right? Yeah, so when that, with that being said, guys, that's how you do a partial close. And again, that works for uh, if you're in profit or if you're in drawdown, right? If I was in drawdown, I want to just go ahead and wave the white flag on half the order and let the other half run to potentially rebound. You can do that as well too. But that's how you would do a partial close. If I long press this again, um, you guys are going to see uh, that you can actually do a new order. So it just takes you over to the order screen. And if I want to do another order, I can hit buy. And now I'm in a buy order and I'm still in my current sell order, right? Uh, another thing you could do too, guys, if you take the order and if you long hold and swipe to the left, you'll see that I have a couple of options here, right? This is going to be my chart. The very first one to the far right with the wiggly lines. That's the chart, all right? The plus would be for me to add a position. I don't want to add a position. The pencil would be for 
to modify the order. You see it says modify at the bottom. So I want to go ahead and put in a stop loss or a TP. I can do that there. Um, this one right here is to close the position. So if I hit that, as you can see at the bottom, it says close with profit. If I want to close it at a, a partial, just put in what parts you want to close. Hit close, and it closes that partial, right? So that's another way to do the exact same thing as if you hold down, right? So those are two different options. You can long hold to get to the options, or you can use the little quick shortcut buttons right here, right? So if you're confused by those shortcut buttons and what they mean, just use this because they're listed here as a description. So that's how you would work that out, guys. So that's how you manage your orders when it comes to your uh, MT5. So that is the trade window. Next up, let's talk about the history window. The very bottom of this little mailbox looking thing, this mailbox, that's your order history, right? As you guys can see, these are all the trades that I just took right now. All right, it shows all my orders that have been closed out, my positions. All right, if I come over here to orders, it goes a little bit further into detail, whether or not it was a stop loss or executed, you know, whether or not it was filled or canceled or whatever the case may be. All right, let's go back to positions. Now at the top here, you can see, you can sort it by the symbol. So like if I want to look at how I did with a certain symbol that I've traded before, it would have it listed here. But as you can see, all I've traded with right now is Bitcoin. So that's what it, why it only shows Bitcoin. But if I had traded Bitcoin, Euro USD, and Audi USD, I can sort my results by just that one symbol if I want to. Next up, you can sort it by these different things. You can sort it by the ticket number. So, you know, when you enter the trade, the opening time of the trade, when the trade was executed, the closing time, when the trade was closed, you know, from either hitting your stop loss or TP or if it was closed by you manually. And then you can have it sorted also by the amount of profit, right? So right now, if I go and sort it by the amount of profit, I don't know if y'all saw it, but it changed right over here. If I click that again, right now it's going to go from the, the least to the uh, high, I mean, highest to the least. If I do the opposite, it goes the opposite direction, right? So there you go. That's how you would do the sorting option. Next up to the right is a little calendar. Now you can show, okay, do I want to look at last week's results? Do I want to look at only today's results? Do I want to look at last month's results? Do I want to look at the last three months or the presets, right? The last three months? Or do I want to look at a custom date, right? Custom period. So on here, you get a calendar pop up, go back as far as you want to and uh, select that particular date this is the two date today is the two date right so from that date to today it has it sorted by that and as you can see it shows the trades uh listed on here and again you can go here and select how you want them uh customized as far as the uh, sorting so that would be the trade window as you can see it shows you any commissions or swaps that you pay it does not show spread though y'all the spread is paid off the top you know, that's that, that's that, 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 that hidden tax, man. You, you, you paying that no matter what. So you don't need, they don't even put it on here. And that's MT5 uh, basics in the nutshells, guys. So if you could uh, drop a comment below, um, do you have any tricks uh, to MT5 that you would like to share that I did not cover? Uh, because I'm a student always, and I'm always looking to, uh, to learn new things. Uh, but thank you guys for your time. And thank you for checking out my video. Y'all have a great day. Peace.